presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Because something is freaking messed up with my browser Chrome. It just like flickers and flickers and flickers. It goes crazy and, you know, the, I couldn't get on the thing. So I had to go to Safari and put in passwords and all that kind of stuff. So I have Shannon and Jennifer and, of course, Eric on the line. Hi, guys. Hey, what's going on, Elisa? Hey, Jennifer. Hey, what's up going on, Eric? How's everyone hey, doing today? hey. Good, good. Uh, How are you guys? I'm doing good now. Have, I think there's an echo because I don't have the direct yeah, connect button. Yeah, yeah because, is. you know, because um, it's, it's Blog Talk Radio. I've been working with them, trying to get them to fix that, but no joy on that one. But anyway, so guess what? We are going to talk about why some of us feel lonely and what can we do about it. Absolutely. Um I, I'm not sure who's starting, but I'll I'll take the floor for a moment. Uh, you, this is a uh, it's a really interesting topic because I feel like this is something that everybody struggles with somewhere in life. Uh, whether you're a teenager, whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, whether you lose somebody as a teenager, whether you lose someone as a kid or an adult or whatever, we 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 become lonely, and I really believe that it's. It's all about getting comfortable with your own company, being comfortable with who you are. And it's, it's easy to uh, fear not having company because, you know, we, we have that void and discomfort when we are alone sometimes. And that's mainly because we, we are stuck with our own thoughts. We're stuck with ourselves. And uh, at the end of the day, that's all we ever have. But um, – I, I, I don't know. I, I, this is a really interesting topic. I, I, I find that there's so many aspects to it that can be figured out and so many ways to conquer these things. But it really, really, really starts off with doing something you love. And even if it's on such a small level, I, I think it's so important yeah. to just take care of yourself in the process. I mean, so if you're feeling alone and you're and you know, not to sound cynical about it, and you're boohooing at home about being lonely, I really think there is something and there's a lot of substance in going out in nature and just taking a walk around the block. Like these are things that we can do as humans on a daily basis to make ourselves feel more connected with the things around us. I, it, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but, you know, even a simple tree outside your house, like even just sitting next to the tree, if you looked at the tree as an other, as a quote unquote other person, you would probably be able to feel a sense of connectivity if you just allow yourself to sit in silence once in a while. And that's just, that's one of the things right off the bat I think of when someone's alone, what do they do? You know, for me as a kid uh, growing up in special education classes, who was picked on and bully constantly, mm. I yeah. felt very alone. I felt very alone. But the thing that helped me was, was using my creativity on some level. And I didn't have many abilities as a kid. Like, once again, my social ability was non-existent. But what was existence was my creative power and just, like, simply enjoying drawing. I enjoyed doing still life drawings. I would, I would oh, look wow. at like little apples on a table and I would just draw the apple on the table inside the dish. And there's Ooh. something about when you connect to those aspects of yourself, you suddenly don't feel like you need the outside um, to fulfill you anymore because you're, you're actually doing stuff that you enjoy. Now I, as a kid, I didn't sit there and say, Oh, I like drawing. I feel lonely. I'm going to go draw. It was more like, I feel so lonely that I need to discover myself and I don't know what that means. And for me, yeah. it was taking a walk around the block. It was drawing and listening to music. That was kind of my thing. And if this sounds kind of crazy too, but believe it or not, everyone, don't be afraid to like dance naked around your house when no one's looking. Cause that that's a form of expression. Like th those type of things get you almost in love with yourself. I would say in, in, on a very smaller level, but those small things add up after a while. And if we can find ways to, 
you know, let our creativity flow in that sense, I think the quote unquote void just kind of dissipates over time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, Eric, I think you can understand because you were quite lonely. Um, yeah, yeah, for much of your life. So what, what, um, what Eric is saying is that uh, people oftentimes think that loneliness means like you're alone, but you can be in a room full of people and have loneliness. Um, oh, yeah. Loneliness, it, what, what he's saying is, number one, everybody really needs to experience loneliness. It's one of the emotions that we're here to experience. But the, the problem with loneliness is loneliness, he says, very easily slips into depression and then hopelessness. Mm. So if you are, he says, if you are somebody who feels lonely, um, you have to really, really pay attention to that because it's a slippery slope um, from so loneliness what do you do, into depression yeah. and then hopelessness. Uh, mm. Well, some of the things that Jamin was mentioning, uh, you know, you get outside, you, you know, find something that you like. Um, that you want to do, engage, engage in life, whatever that looks like mm. to each individual person, you have to yeah. engage with, with people um, and, or animals or nature. You have to engage in something. But one of the other things that he says um, that Eric is saying is that if you are somebody who experiences loneliness, where if you look at your life, loneliness is kind of a running theme or there's, you know, there's a loneliness is something that would describe you. He says there's, yeah. there's something else to learn there. There's a lesson to learn there. You have to look at yourself, look at your behavior. Um, sometimes our own behavior creates the isolation, creates the loneliness. Uh, be willing yeah. to look at what you're doing or not doing that may be contributing to this underlying loneliness. But, but he says, you know, everybody experiences loneliness at some point. It's, a, it's a, an emotion that we're supposed to feel. At some of point. Course. Um, yeah. So do some people come in with a spiritual contract, in, you know, to, to feel loneliness? Yes, absolutely. Why? Absolutely. What do to learn from that? Um, <laughs> he, he actually kind of makes a joke and he said, uh, it's, it's like one of the worst punishments to, to pick loneliness to come into. Uh, he's, he's kind of well, joking, but kind of not. Though. He's like, oh, yeah. But well, but it yeah. feels punishing here. It feels like well, a punishment yeah. here. Um, why would a soul spirit he, come in with the, that contract? What, what, one what's of the big reasons. By it? One of the big reasons he said is um, if you if you choose uh, a life to come into loneliness, is um, learning to be self reflective. Um, to, to, to really oh. truly learn yourself, l- learn about yourself, to learn who you are, to, to deepen the knowledge of who you are on a soul level. Uh, yeah. So it's too easy in the human, in the human form. If you're very busy, yeah. if you have a very active life, you're doing this, you're doing that, you have a big family. He said, it's too easy to, to miss learning about who you are. Okay. All right. Cause you focus on uh, so, everybody else so and everything else that's could, going on. Yeah. Could it be other things like um, uh, someone wants to come in as an observer or if they're a teacher, sometimes teachers are lonely because students come in and out of their lives or maybe they're a star seed and don't really feel like they belong in this world. So, Oh, yeah, there's, he, there's tons of reasons. There's tons of reasons to come in um, to experience loneliness. Um, you know, he said one of, one of the reasons might be that in, in a, another lifetime, you isolated somebody, you know, you made somebody, you know, feel, or, you know, what you did kind of isolated them and pushed them away and, and they felt loneliness. So you want to experience the other side, um, of that coin. Like, what is it like to be the person who's isolated, to be the person who feels lonely? Um, it's about experience. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's all about experience. So, and, and really he said, you know, whatever the reason that you come in, to learn it, um, it's it, the the same end result is possible for everybody. Um, learning who you are, learn learning your soul growth. Um, no matter mm-hmm. why you came in with it, the end result could be the same if you if you truly 
pay attention and listen to that lesson. And then he said some people come into a life and they experience loneliness or, or a perceived loneliness by others, and they're absolutely not lonely. Um, you know, okay. They, you know, if you think of somebody who lives, you know, kind of on the outskirts of society on their own alone, he said there's people who mm-hmm. live like that who are not lonely. They are not experiencing oh. loneliness. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All yeah. Right. And, so, um, um, go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So the other thing that he was um, talking about with the loneliness is that uh, some people self-inflict it because they think if they kind of remove themselves from society or from people or from, you know, life, so to speak, that mm-hmm. it will protect them. Um, oh, so wow. that – yeah, that's um, it's a, it's a sensitivity thing, but then it creates so much loneliness for the fear of what might happen to me, who might hurt me. Um, so there are people who choose to live a more lonely life, even though they do feel the loneliness. They choose to do yeah. this because they feel like it will protect them from experiences. Oh wow. I really oh like I really like that I really like that Eric and Jennifer. I, I, I couldn't agree more because I know for me personally, even when I started getting friends as I got older and, and started meeting new people and having new experiences, I often felt I, I was around many people, but I often felt lonely because I didn't know how to socially uh conduct myself in front of others. I didn't know what okay. like what, 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 like that, it even, I thought I would take myself out of situations purposely to avoid the awkwardness of when people are discussing, let's just say a movie that I've never seen before. Uh, and everyone's doing quoting lines and you, I, there was even a fear of like, just simply saying, Hey, I've never seen that movie. And there's a sense of loneliness mm-hmm. in that, 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 that people can experience. And, 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 and I think that loneliness is more like, do I even have a voice in any of this stuff? Yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 th- you know, that's a, obviously that's a very simple insecurity um, that most introverts can even go through. You know, it's like, um, do I even have a, so then you just choose to remove yourself from the situation uh, and what Jennifer and Eric were saying, thinking that you're protecting yourself, but, in reality, you're, you're, you're trying to control something that, that um, you're afraid to step into. You know, stepping into the unknown is, is where you really find um, more waves of information, regardless if it goes in your favor or not. So, like, I mean, just to anyone who, out there who's even feeling that right now, I would encourage you to continually just try to put yourself in more situations, whether you feel comfortable in them or not like put yourself in those positions because those little nuances are going to make you even stronger in everything that you do even if you don't think so you know there's something about the focus when we focus on something it has to expand so if your goal is like hey i want to i want to make more friends then it simply starts with just simply saying hi to somebody you know, hello, how was your day? It could start so small. Yeah. There's so many things, there's so much context around this subject. And that's why I find it so damn interesting because there's so many levels of loneliness that people feel. It could be from losing someone. It could be from uh, not being in a relationship. It could be from not having friends. It could be having all these friends, but not even feeling like you're really connected to these people like you're not because connected. simply yeah. you're, yeah, mm-hmm. it's only because simply your values don't align. You know, sometimes we we put ourselves in situations with people because we, quote unquote, didn't want to be lonely. However, we also might, we might, we might hurt ourselves because maybe we don't even, maybe our values don't even line up with theirs and we're only hanging around them so we cannot feel that, once again, that loneliness. And these are, these are aspects, that's why it's so damn important to like, when you say you're lonely, like understand what the context is for you and understand like, Hey, where's my self-awareness in this? What is it that I'm, that I'm trying to achieve? I think that's really important to kind of, that's like the first question you should ask. Okay. I feel lonely. Why? And then once you understand your why, then you can be able to perpetuate a new reality for yourself 
based upon taking the chance or, or taking a stride in, in an area that you may or may not be comfortable in. And I think there's always more, there's always high reward when you do those quote unquote high risks that you perceive that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, Eric, what would you yeah. have done differently to not be so lonely? Opened up more, talked more, um, been more honest with how I was feeling. Uh, yeah. um, he, oh, and he said I would have asked, I, I would have asked for more help. Well, um, easier said than done, huh? It's a big, yeah, it's a little stubbornness there. He said, <laughs> a little stubborn, Aww. little stubbornness there. Um, yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. the other thing that he's talking about with the with the loneliness is that it, loneliness. There, he, what he's saying is there are certain emotions that we'll experience as humans that that when we're experiencing them, it is an indication that you need to change something in your life. Loneliness oh, yeah. is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, unhappy, you know, unhappiness, unsettled. Um, these are all indications that something needs to change. Um, but with loneliness, especially if you've gotten to the point of isolating yourself, uh, what he's saying is oftentimes what will happen is people then get nervous when they go out into public and they try to get back out there um, because they're worried. What are people going to think of me? Am I being weird? Am I, you know? And he just. He just wants to remind people that truly, truly other people do not care that much <laughs> about what you're doing and what you're saying. It, it's just true. our perception. Our, yes. It's, that is it, true. He said, people. you know, when you go, yeah, people don't care. They don't care if your shoes don't match your shirt or if you said something that you think is stupid. They don't care. They're not thinking about it later. It might keep you up at night, but they're not thinking about it two seconds later. Of course not. Of course not. Wow. Um, all right. So any other, before we uh, go on to, uh, um, I guess, callers. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Ben? No. Nope. you? Nothing from, uh, nothing from no, I would just, here. I would just <laughs> encourage everybody to be the best they can. That, but the best they can. I would just encourage that. Like, you know, if, if you're someone who, where this message is somewhere, somewhat resonating with you, or just the the idea of it all. Like, just understand. Like, just be the best you can. And and there's something in doing that. That mindset is different than. Oh, I feel lonely and telling yourself that over and over and over again. The mindset is is so important. We 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 must. Uh, educate ourselves uh we must train ourselves i wouldn't i shouldn't say educate i I would say train ourselves to to look at the optimism instead of the pessimistic side of things and and it's very easy to do that when you feel lonely and um i'm not even saying that as a judgment as much as as an observation and it it, will strengthen your mind when you just try the best you can uh yeah there that i would have to say with that Yes, and actually exactly. Eric's got a couple more things. Eric's got a couple more things that he's um, saying is, um, you know, he he's what he's saying is that life can be scary. You know, it, it, it can be fearful down here, but we are meant to be here living and experiencing life, not closing ourselves off. So if you yeah. are somebody who, who, like Jamin said, this resonates with and you don't know what to do, um, he said, you know, think about what you're interested in and then try to find a group um, that, that, you know, if you're interested in selling, try to find a selling group in your area, a book club. Just try to find something that you have common ground on because that will make you feel more confident that, okay, I like to read, so I'm going to join this book club. And then you have, you've already met people who like the same kind of things that you do, and that can be a yeah. good first step. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Very good advice, people. Awesome. All right, so we will go ahead and take some of my computer to work here. It's like a disaster in the making. Oh, here we go. Good, thank God. Okay, let's see. Uh, We have, who do we have here? Um, We have somebody from the 210, Eric, right at the top of our list. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, Lisa. Thank you for taking my call. Um, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you beautifully. Okay. Well, I I um 
I appreciate what you guys are, are talking about. Um, however, um, in my experience, maybe maybe other people have had similar experiences. Um, I, my, my wife and I left a, a church, the Mormon church, and um, in, in that religion, once you leave, you're excommunicated and, and pretty much people don't want to associate with you anymore. Um, yeah. First of all, I want to say that um, I have a beautiful wife, I've got beautiful children, and, and I love a wonderful house. So um, there's times that I feel like there's no need for me to feel lonely, um, but I do. And as a guy, as a, about this stuff, I've tried people look at you sideways if you do. So um, realistically, you know, women tend to have more luck in, in, those, in that regard of, of being able to share their, their feelings and stuff. Um, I've taken the approach of uh, stoicism. I've been learning more about that. And um, it seems to help a little bit with, with my mind and, and, you know, preparing for the worst case scenario and, and you know, hoping for the best. But I really not care what yeah. people think. But but at the end, but the other day, I reflect, and and it is very tough. I mean, um, you know, I I've, I've tried. Is it Damien that was talking earlier? Um, you know, I, I feel like I, there's people at work that I that I know, but there's nothing. There's no substance. There's no. Um, there's yeah. Nothing like no connection. No feeling of connection. All right. So, Eric, right, what should you and, do? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Oh no no I'm I'm done. Yeah so Eric, well, what's going on? Why why did the you first thing, It's it, it's a grief. Um, even though you've made the decision to leave the the church, there's a loss huh. there. It's a grief. It goes deeper than a loneliness. Uh, so you're he says you are missing that type of connection, even though that was no longer the right thing for you. Um, there, there's a sense of community there that you have not been able to replace. Yeah, well, what can you do? How, what, okay, what have you tried Unity Church? Church? That'd be cool. Or I I don't know. Gonna, yeah, that's what Eric was saying. Have you tried another um, religion? Like, uh, spirit, no, like I mean, one, Unity Church. That's I, all spiritual. I mean, they, they're all accepting non-denominational. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I, I haven't. I just I got burned with it. And once you, most people that leave the, the LDS church, um, it's very tough for them to go back. It's very cultish, and so it's not to go into too much, but it's mm-hmm. kind of difficult. Nothing about it, but but um, it's not easy. It's quite easier said than done. I mean, I, I mean, we have tried. We have tried to go to try to go to different religions. But it's very difficult. Have you visited? Not filling the void. Unity. Have you visited the uh, Unity Church? No, I've, I've researched it. Um, I thought it was very fascinating and interesting. Um, maybe that's later on, but it's kind of difficult. Um, but I, I, I know what you're saying is true. Um, exactly what you mentioned about a sense of community. It's kind of like um, in, in ancient times when a person got kicked out of their tribe, that's pretty much it. I mean, they're, there's, really, there's no point of existence, right? So that's why I feel sometimes like, you kick, you're kicked out of a tribe, out of family, you know, family lives, um, you know, gatherings and even, you know, church-related events. That's pretty much it. So, um, well, I'm, again, I'm taking you what, what, But you know mm-hmm. what might help? Like, sometimes people get divorced, okay? But once they found, find out what their spiritual contract was and that it was accomplished, that's very healing. So maybe that you had a spiritual contract to join the um, – the Latter-day Saints, and something was accomplished, what you set out to do, and now you can move forward. Was there, Eric, was there any spiritual contract uh, that was honored and completed in this situation? Yeah, this, this was, this had come to an end, and what Eric has just said is that your head and your heart are still in different places with it. Like intellectually you know, but the emotions haven't caught up. Um, and this is going to take some time. This, this is going to take some time to rectify the head and the heart in, in, onto okay. the same page. Well, what was the spiritual contract? Um, oh, um, <laughs> okay. It, it, it was in regards to the strictness of, of the religion. Um, it, and and rectifying the strictness of the religion with the 
individual beliefs. Um, they just didn't match up. And, and being able to work through that to be able to, to make the step away, this was a big deal. This was a big deal for you guys to leave. It was not an easy decision. Um, right. And that's what it was about. It was about, it was about coming to terms with all this, working through the turmoil, the guilt, um, and actually being able to step away. Well, what was the yeah. lesson that was accomplished? That, that's what I want to see. If, if there's a closure here, like, okay, yeah, for example, so-and-so got married. We got married because we needed to bring Fiona into the world. We accomplished that. So then, you know, we struggled, got divorced. But it's okay because we, that's what we came to earth to do. So that's what I want to know. In, in his case, what did he come here, he and his wife come here to accomplish with the Mormon church and – was it accomplished? Well, what yeah, lesson so, was Well, it's not done yet. It, it is not done yet. Um, okay, well, so what, what, is what Eric is saying is it's the whole big picture. Um, number one, he's also saying this is not, um, I don't know if you believe in past lives, but he said you had other lives where the religion was so intense. Um, and so you were not able to break away before. Uh, and you were trying to, you were, trying to do that again, trying to break away. Mm-hmm. Um, but the mm-hmm. lesson is not done yet. The, the lesson is not done. Uh, we are so still maybe in the process, even though we... Yeah, maybe a past life uh, progression is in order. But see, um, I mean, um, so what Eric is saying is sometimes we make the decision and we act on the decision and the lesson still is yet to come and you're still working through your lesson. Um, agreed. Uh, well, I have, All right, I have well, that's, one yeah. Uh, just I know there's other callers, but I, I feel like lately I've been receiving a lot of intuition. Um, I, I shared some ideas with a coworker of mine, and um, the person kind of was receptive, and later on wasn't. But after that, I still kept receiving like these. I, I don't know if it's if it's just channeled, me. Channel channel uh, information. Yeah. Yeah. Who is channeling to to Mike? Yeah. Who is this entity, the spirit that keeps? bugging Mike and channeling and channeling and channeling stuff to him. Okay. Is, is that um, a spirit that? guide, spirit, spirit guide, spirit guide. Um, you just want to, okay. Dealing with stuff like this. Um, well, Eric says there's, there is a time and a place. You, um, so if you're having issue at work with this, pull back. That's then then that's not a person. That that energy, there's something there that's a little bit awkward and uncomfortable. So pull that energy back there and find the right place for it. No, so like, how like I said, I'm not the up. I mean, he can't shut I'm, it I'm off. Like, how can he? How can he stop it? Uh, well, there are there are definitely ways that you could get that to shut down. Um, am I? I'm just, I'm just am I am I receiving something that is accurate from the person, or is it just something that I'm making up in my own head? I, I wouldn't be offended. If, if yeah, no, no, I no, I understand. I me Jennifer, I understand that feeling because um, it's like. Okay, am I just making this up, or is this really happening? No, you are getting information. If, if this is something that you don't want to continue to get, there are ways that you can shut it down. Bro, okay. I, I, have, I have a unique perspective, I think. I don't know, but this is just mine, and I, I don't want to take away anything of what you feel, but, bro, I say fucking step into it, man, because you are yeah. discovering aspects of yourself that are very beautiful, and – I think those can be explored if um, it, you're going to get a lot of th- here. Here's the thing. Jennifer and Eric said a beautiful thing too. They said the lesson's not over yet. And I 110% mm. agree. I think these are all breadcrumbs to the mansion, dude. And you Ooh. right now are totally finding your way slowly And, you know, there's this thing about us today, especially in today's day and age, and I don't know if it's because of cell phones or what, but we want these things right now. We want to know the answer. We want the quick, we want the quick answers, and we're conditioned at this point. Yeah. The journey is beautiful. Okay, I've got to take other callers, but I really think, Jamin, 
Thank you and Mike, Michael get in touch with me. To Mike, together. get in touch with me. I want to talk to you. Yeah. I want to talk to you. I'm going to, I'm going to hammer you, dude. Seriously. I'm going to, I'm going to try to help you out. Yeah. Bro. I want to talk to you, man. So if you're interested, please contact be, me. That would be awesome. So com. Check it out. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Say hi to Jenny right. for me. I will. Thank you. Okay. Bye. bye. Yeah, he's uh he's such a sweet guy. Uh he he was the one that came in to um uh just popped in uh to the to when you guys were there. Uh, okay, he it was his family so cute. All right, oh, he, okay. let's see here oh, oh, oh. we have somebody from the eight three two area code. How you doing? Are you there? Oh, hello? Hello. Welcome to Can the you show. Hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, because uh, I cannot hear myself. I, I, the first time I've talked to, you know, to a radio show. Okay, great. You're doing good. So, what question do you have for our boy? Hi. Um, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um. Uh, I talked to you. It was, I mean, I emailed you. If I remember my my portrait. Yes, I know. Yes. Yes, yeah, right. um, I have a question for Eric. Um, uh, I want to follow in the uh, in the uh, path of being an artist, but it's really, really, really hard. And I'm always mm-hmm. just wondering, um, uh, yeah, the, if I should go to college instead. Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, I okay. Follow, her, I have... her work is amazing. God, it's awesome. So, you know, so I see mm-hmm. wondering, but people will say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to pay that much for it. It's like, you know what? It's like, I told her, she maybe, is this what I told you? That maybe you should do these drawings of deceased loved ones for people because I think it's very healing. Um, yeah, but, I'm not gonna, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually trying to. Uh, if I, I'm started doing drawing Eric. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've 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 seen it. It's amazing so far. Mm-hmm. All right, so Eric, what advice do you have okay. for her? What do you have for Elizabeth? Okay, so yeah, what Eric is saying is that you don't have to choose one or the other. You can you can go to college for something and continue to do your artwork. It's not one or the other. You can do both. So if there is something that you want to go to college for, do that and continue Mm -hmm. to do your art. Your art is always going to be part of your life. Um, It's not one or the other. It's not one or the other. You can do both. Can she make money on her art? Can she make a living on her art? Uh, Can she she make, can Elizabeth make a living, a good living on her art? Okay. Okay. Yes, you can make money on your art. However, he is saying that you, if you go and just be an artist, you will struggle for a while. Yes, you will absolutely struggle financially if you do strictly art. But that, yes, for you how can make money you doing your art. How long okay. would you struggle? Okay. Well, it'll be it'll be years. It'll be years of struggle. Um, well, what if I help making her by meet, introducing? Well, what about if I yeah, see, her see, to that's the CE the community and say, when, yeah. yeah, I mean, if I yeah, say, that'll look, be guys, very helpful. She, she, yeah, she can paint and uh, draw your deceased loved ones, and it's beautiful and so realistic. Um, yes. Would that help? That would okay, be good. very uh, helpful. Um, but yeah. but I, he, Eric is saying, um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to be an artist. And it directly goes to how comfortable you're going to be putting yourself out there. And he says you still need to work yeah. in that area. Oh, um, okay. Confidence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So if you're afraid that people aren't going to like my art, I don't want to, you know, you can slow that down. You shouldn't be afraid. Oh. It's awesome. I'm here to tell you guys it's amazing. And I can't wait to show her work off. <laughs> All right, yeah. thank you, Elizabeth. But you know what Eric said? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Eric, just, Eric said about her art, he said that is literally part of her heart that she is putting out oh. there for people to see, and it's terrifying to think people won't like it. Um, so he says you need oh. to do some work in this area. 
of just like, you know what? Fuck it. If people don't like my art, that's their problem. And then you just move on um, to the next person who does like your art. <laughs> well, yeah, I struggle um, with that a lot. About, yeah, what do you think, Eric, about what's the, her picture that she's painting of you so far? Are you helping her? Yeah, it's awesome. You like it? Awesome. Yeah. yeah oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank we'll you so touch. much. Yes, of Bye. course. Bye. Good Bye. luck. Bye. Thank Bye. you. I mean, she really is so talented. I'm not blown away. Is he, in a, is he in a red shirt? Is, is he in a red I mean, shirt? I don't know. Not sure. I uh, don't. I think it's all black and white for now, but I can't remember what shirt he was wearing okay. at the time. I sent her a, a picture. Uh, all right, we have okay. someone from the 404 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello. 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 Hi. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's this up? is Courtney calling. I just wanted hey, a general message. <laughs> all right, Eric, go for it. General message. <laughs> A general, oh, a general message. Um, yeah, I he, don't honestly, know. he, he <laughs> um, he's talking about your shoes. I, I have no idea oh. why. Uh, he, he's talking about your shoes. Well, what about your okay. shoes? He likes your shoes. Do you have a sh- Do you have a thing with shoes? No. Or, well, what I, I, I was no helping. Idea. I was helping someone with shoes. Uh, an older lady. She needed help with. Shoes. I was helping her buy the right shoes. Okay. He, he he was talking. Yep. He was just talking about shoes. Um. I don't know. You said well, maybe that's him validating. That, that's <laughs> is that him validating that yeah. he's with her? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. Do you help people for a living? Like, do you do you help people? Yes, I do. Um, shaman work. Well, I'm going to classes for shaman, and I'm a healer. Wow. Oh gosh, that's okay. awesome. You you um absolutely it's so funny shoes. Um but you absolutely need to be helping people like like this even if it's just like giving this little bit of yourself because whatever you did with this woman with the shoes that was a big deal for her. Like oh. that was a big deal for her. I like you showed wow. her kindness. I don't know if this is a woman you know, is this a stranger? Did you know this woman even? No. Her um okay, nephew and, asked me to come over to the house and help her. Oh, yeah. Um, this was a big deal for her, bigger than you know. Wow. That's awesome. Know. So shoes. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. GSW. Okay, I keep helping her. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for oh, doing what you do, thank you. girl. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Bye. Oh, I love people who help others. That's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. We have somebody from the um, 646 area code. Well, let me – come on. Come on, go. Computer slow. Having problems, people. Oh, okay, wait. Hang on. Let me X out of this pop-up. Oh, God. Oh, no. What's going on? Okay. Um, You keep talking. I'm going to have to restart. And come back on because there's something messed up here with my computer. God. So, um, um, yeah, you guys can keep we'll talking talk about, about the event now, maybe? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and do that. I'll be yeah. right back. Jamie, Absolutely. You describe yeah, the event? Yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes, we have an event at Elisa's house, the Medus residence. Uh, it will be June 28th to the 30th. Uh, me and Jennifer will be there. Uh, she's going to be channeling information for Eric and Jennifer. I don't want to. I don't want to take words out of your mouth and what you're going to do. But I, I totally. I know she's doing private readings too, uh, and I will be there as well. And uh, our whole topic of discussion mainly is going to be centered around anxiety and how to make anxiety your ally. So we we have a lot of things that we want to give to people that brings value and uh, and helps them. One of the main things that's really happening right now in the world around us is everyone's getting is is, be, is is having more anxiety in their lives. And I think mm-hmm. this is a very important topic. And I, I, I know it's going to mean something to Jennifer and Eric as well, because uh, yeah. this is something that everybody's experiencing. And I think 
having discussions around this subject is going to really start the healing process for a lot of us. And uh, the, the, I think one of the main issues is we, we look at anxiety and we talk about the nasty things about it instead of really looking how it can be a, a power to us. And um, that, that's just something we're, we're definitely going to explore uh, when we're there amongst other things. It's going to be really cool. So if you guys get the chance, uh, go to channelingeric.com. Uh, you can you can be able to find the ticket information there. We would love to have you. Yeah, and, and Jennifer, right. uh, absolutely, take exactly. it away. It's on the right hand. Are you back? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm back. I, I was never gone. I, I just missed something. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll be yeah I'll be channeling. I'll be I'll be doing some work with anxiety on a spiritual level, um, and like like Jamin said, doing some private readings as well. Sounds awesome. Okay, now we're ready for the, somebody from the 646 area code. Hey there, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you today? Good. Who are we talking to? You are speaking with Lisa. Hey, Lisa. This is Elisa. Yes. What nice you got, to meet girl? You. Nice to meet okay, you. Okay, I have a quick question. Thank you. I have a quick question for you in regards to what should I do? Okay, at one time about seven years ago, I was homeless, and uh, my grandmother passed away, and she left me some money. I don't get that until like another two years. But Mm -hmm. I wanted to see would it be a good idea to open up a small shelter for women that are trying to get back on their feet. Wow. Mm. That's awesome. That's really cool. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what Eric is saying is this is a wonderful idea, but uh, do not use your own money to do it. Okay? Really? Okay. So if if you are going to do this, you need to find grant money. You need to find investment money. Do not use your own money to do it. Okay. Yeah, I I mean, you can get municipal money. I mean, all sorts of stuff you can do. Yeah, good idea. Yep. Okay, that sounds I, excellent. Yeah. Can I throw a quick comment real fast to you? I just want to throw oh, it, and I'm sorry to interject. Um, I love your desire to do this so much that I really, really believe that the universe, God, whatever, however you want to look at it all, is going to provide you these resources. I just, I can feel it. Mm-hmm. As long as, as you stay so connected to the message in that, that you want to do for people because you experience that, I know for a fact it's going to work out for you. I just wanted to say that. Um, it's really beautiful wow. thing that you're doing, and um, you're going to affect a lot of people positively. Just, I, I want to give you this little piece of advice as you move forward in that, or if you do move forward with those ideas, uh, totally totally, totally keep a positive mental attitude about it. Like, don't question oh, yeah. it along the way, even if it seems bleak, yeah. because there's going to be peaks and valleys, and it's really, really important that when you're doing something that's so awesome for people, it's going to be fucking hard, and that's a good thing. Uh, yep. That's a good thing, oh, and yeah. I mean that in a really good way. I, I mean that to tell you that with strength, yeah. because if you stick with it and you commit to it, you will succeed at that. Because the message of helping people and, and, and spreading light is way more powerful than any darkness can ever put. So I just want to say that to you and um, go on and go on with what you wanted to say. I, I cut you off, so I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I will definitely. I'm taking you guys' advice. I love it. Yes. Now the only question yeah. here is this: I'm moving to California in a few in, within the next year and a half, two years. And currently I stay in Brooklyn. Should I open it in New York City or Brooklyn? I mean, I'm sorry, New York City or California? Do, do, do you have to move to California? <laughs> Could you no, stay in Brooklyn? I yeah, I can stay here, yeah. Okay. I, Brooklyn, Eric is like, no, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Um uh, so free will, you've got your free will there. You could open this either place, but he's saying, no, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Uh, and the other thing on, on to not using your own money, exactly what Jamin said. If your own money is what's tied up in this, you automatically go into this with fear of failure, okay? Oh, and it will yeah. never work. So do you say mm-hmm. no? That's Brooklyn why not your no? money. Are you talking, when you said oh. no, Brooklyn, I mean, do not put it in oh, Brooklyn. Oh, no, stay in Brooklyn. Or, stay in Brooklyn. Stay, stay in, in Brooklyn. Okay. Sorry. Right, 
Thank you. Stay Thank in you Brooklyn. For calling. All right. Good awesome. luck with Thank that. You, Mike. Thank you. Good luck. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. I love it. That's so great. Oh my God. Okay, we have somebody from the eight six five area code. Hey, Lou, how you doing? Good. This is Beth from Tennessee. Oh, Beth, I haven't heard from you in a long time. Where you been, girl? I don't know. I keep forgetting it. It changed to Tuesday. Every Thursday, I'm like, oh wait, no, <laughs> oh, I missed I know, it. I know. I know. We're just trying to mess with your mind and stuff. Going on. So, <laughs> what you got for our boy? Well, I want to know what he thinks about um, my job right now. Um, I, you know, I, I honestly, I feel so sick to my stomach right now. Oh, um, no. when you, as soon as you said that about work, I feel so sick to my stomach. Um, it's, it's very stressful. It's very stressful. Mm. Um, okay. Stay or go. That's your choice. Oh, why is this it's so a, stressful? This feels like there's so much chaos. It's, you want me to tell you? Yeah. yeah. A very short version. A very short version. Um, I'd worked there for three years. I'll just give you a short. And about two months ago, uh, my boss came in his office and said that he was replacing me and she would start Tuesday and I was going to train her on how to do my job. God. And so I did. After I said F you to him. Oh, um, good. I stayed and trained her. And now I'm working like kind of a promoter in housekeeping. Anyways, some different jobs. In the same um, but place? I'm not, oh, are you, I was going to say, are you in the same place? And the lady that I trained yeah. is now my boss. No. And, no, you, you stay or go. Whatever, whatever you decide, stay or go here. But I physically feel sick. Over this, is there oh, a God. lesson? There's not. What? Is, I keep feeling like I'm supposed to learn, like build character to suck it up and. No. Is it, what, uh, you, that, what Eric says is you need to learn that you're not disposable. You're not disposable. Um, mm-hmm. You, you mm-hmm. gotta stop letting people shit on you. Sorry. You know how I am. I'm swearing, but that? I'm like whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, you don't have to do it in a way that makes you look like <laughs> um, like you've lost your mind for a minute. Um, but you've got to work on your self worth and what do you deserve, and and you know that staying here in the same place and doing this makes you feel less than. And mm-hmm. at the moment you're accepting it, look for another job. Look for another yeah, job. What kind of job? What kind of job? It, what kind of job is it? Yeah, no, no, no. What kind of job well, well, does she get? Yeah. Well, whatever you know, whatever the same kind of industry that you were in. Look in, look in the same industry. You have, I mean, you have experience. So look in, look yeah. in the same area. But you, this, uh, you, you didn't, you did not deserve this. Um, Thank you. But you you get you're a bit used to accepting behavior that mm-hmm. you don't deserve. So we've got to work oh, in no, that no, area. You got to stick up saying. for yourself, girl. Yeah. yeah. You, but stick up for yourself you are, in a way that doesn't make you look like you're off your hinges. You know, there's right, a way to stick totally. up for yourself hey, look, without like coming at yeah. somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. that's easy. And, and, that's, and, that's and that's quite honestly, that. sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes that can look like just getting yourself a new job, giving your notice and leaving, you know, it doesn't have to be dramatic. Mm-hmm. It can just be like, you know what? No, this is not okay. So I'm going to do something mm-hmm. different. Good. Mm-hmm. Sounds mm-hmm. awesome. All right, Beth, thanks for calling in. Thank you so much. You nailed it. Good mm-hmm. luck. Love you all. Love you. Love you too. I love her accent. It's so cool. Uh, all right, let's see. We got somebody from the seven six zero area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hi, Elisa. Hello. Hello. Who are we? Who are you? <laughs> I know who I am. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi everybody. Hi Jennifer. <laughs> I'm Camelia. I'm calling from Carlsbad. <laughs> and from uh, where? I wanted to ask. 
Yes. I wanted to ask Eric about um, – I'm working part-time right now, but my heart is calling me to go work at the 10%. Oh, yeah, that's something personal with you, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, Eric, what do you think? Okay. Okay. You want you're working part time, but you want to work at the cancer center. Is that what you said? Yes, I work part time helping uh, my friends, you know, with their company. But it's like something's calling me to go help at the cancer center. Mm. Oh, boy. Okay. So there's there's it's interesting because there's very mixed things here. There, I, I, Eric is saying yes, you are being called to it. But it's a. This would be in a very emotional. Yeah. Um, For the this would be grief. very yeah. impactful. Yes. Yes. Well, oh, it, it, this is. This will be something that if you actually do this, you're only going to be able to do it for like 18 months to two years at the most because um, you're so empathic that you're going to get you're going to get over um, run with the emotion. So if you do this, you need to really look into some stuff to balance your energy, to keep your energy levels up, um, because this will yeah. deplete your energy. Although it's wonderful, um, it's why some, it's why a lot of times hospice nurses only last about you know eighteen months to two years. It's very intense work, very intense. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And so you're very you sensitive. To, yeah. What could you do to avoid yeah. that? Thing? Surely there's something. <laughs> Or something. Well, he says, yeah, what, what he says, and then he kind of laughs because he knows that it's not really, it would be something very difficult. You, you, would, you would have to not get too intertwined with the patients, with their stories, yeah. their lives. Mm-hmm. But he says, you're not going to be able to do that very easily at all. Let's okay. remember that we are eternal uh, beings. Just tell yourself, we are eternal beings. They're just going home. They'll be back. Yes, but she, back. she feels other people's grief. So, yeah. so it's not yeah. even just about the patients. It would be about the family the members. Family. You feel other people's yeah. grief as if it is your own. Well, I maybe maybe, maybe this is energy. your calling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It sounds like it, but maybe it's it, what you're supposed to do is educate the family members into all that you've learned here from telling Eric that we are eternal beings. Yeah, they are just going home. That they just don't have to have a body, but. You know everything that ails that body, that et cetera, et cetera. So maybe, maybe I think that's what you were meant to do. But what am I? I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Eric? Um, learning, learning about also some grief counseling of your own, and this kind of thing, uh-huh. like like that, that will help kind of hold you up. If you do get a job like this, Eric says absolutely, absolutely, get some like talk therapy, some mental health counseling so that you have somebody to kind of give all of your oh, okay. um, access to yeah. every week. So that would Jamie? be definitely one way that would help you. Yeah. Um, what, what about yeah. you, Jamin? Do you have anything to, any advice to offer her? Oh yeah. My advice is always the same with everybody. When you feel something, go fucking do it. Because when you yeah. do that, I, I was, as, as we were talking to Mike earlier in the very beginning of the, the whole entire show, I mean, there's something about when you have a calling, whether it's quote unquote right or wrong or this or that, if you just go do that, that's going to give you the next step that you need. And I love the advice that Eric gave about that you're an empath and the, your role in wanting to do that may be to help people go home in a nice, peaceful way. It, there's so many, there's so many avenues and reasons why you could be getting into that. But I say when you feel something so strongly, um, and, and, and this is not to even undermine the work we do, but when you feel something so strongly, go for it. And don't ask people mm-hmm. questions because there is so much more value in chasing what you want because if you never do it based upon fear or the questioning of it, yeah. you're never going to forgive yourself. And that's really, really important. I, I just – I really, really believe in this. And take it from the kid who – who, who got picked on and bullied, and, but I still chased my dreams, no matter, regardless awesome. of what anybody told me. You know what I mean? Just take that's it from awesome. that kid because that's, that's, that's just what my heart says, and I'm not right or wrong yeah. either. It's just my opinion. Yeah, I was, I was bullied too. I was bullied too. 
and uh, that coming through being stronger and help trying to yes. help other people. Exactly. We go through these things. Exactly. For there you go. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Thank I'm going to thank you very much. More. Sure, sweetie. We're going to take one more call, and it's probably an international call because one 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 one. Hello. One, one, one. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. Oh, it's me. Okay. Hi, Alyssa. It is you. How are you? Thank okay. You, thank you for being I'm so good. patient. It's okay. I'm Scott. I'm from New Zealand, and um, myself is Chinese as oh, well. Oh, that's on my so, fucking list. That is on my fucking list. Okay. Go there. But go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, love you guys. And I was like, I was talking about connection as in my whole life and all the existing life as well. Been experiencing like loneliness. And I do recently did like um, do the meditation about like um, self inquiry about the, the how I feel, and also do the like, alchemy mm. process, which is like recognize mm. what you feel without the filter of ego and mind, which is the idea of separation. So when yes. you do the self inquiry and recognize the emotion and realize all oh, the like, when I recognize my depression, loneliness, and loneliness actually is excitement, ecstasy within those feelings. So. So I would uh, I'll mm-hmm. urge everyone to look into the alchemy process, the emotional alchemy process, to feel the emotion and recognize it and ask yourself, what can I learn from it? And actually learn and learn mm-hmm. from the emotion, loneliness, instead of actually developing it more and more. And that's, that's Oh, my all. God, you sound and like Eric. Other- I mean, he, he, you're right. I mean, <laughs> we're emotional beings. We need to feel yeah. first, think second. But go ahead. Yeah. Okay. The uh, so my... My, um, the other thing's a question. Yes, <laughs> I love uh, would love to ask Eric about my soul, uh, not mission because the mission is the ego way to say it. My soul intention to to experience because oh. uh, I feel everything's coming up. I feel it, but I'm not sure what's going on because <laughs> I'm interested in many things, but I'm not sure what's what's going to happen. And also, hi Eric, hi hi Jennifer as well. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. So first and, first and foremost, what Eric says is one of the reasons that you're here is to, like, spread the light, thin the veil, um, oh, yeah. help oh, ground people, help center that guy's people. Wise. Right. Um, yeah, you're a wise yes. dude. You've been around yes. the block so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, That's awesome. And, and as, yeah. far as, as far as, like, your work and kind of career stuff goes, that's very yeah. fluid, Eric says. It's very fluid. Oh. You just go where it takes you. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I uh, thought so, because I was always thought I'm gonna do some music stuff because um, I wanted to collaborate in like some um, spiritual healing stuff into pop music and uh, I can even I just I have one to that kind of thing. But to me, is I have like sense of uncertainty a lot because that to me is I feel like if it doesn't work, that kind of thing. That's that's kind well, that's of, just human. You know, yeah. That's just yeah. human. That's just human nature. Yeah. So yeah. you just do, you do this, you do your music and, and then yeah. that will take you other places. You just go with it. Um, and, yeah. and don't worry so much about, is this right? Is this wrong? What is it? Just do it. Mm. Now, just do it. Is, Agreed. I had to be real quick cause we have to mm. wrap it up before we go to the, into the next yeah. show. But, um, but you know, uncertainty is a beautiful thing. Because it keeps your yeah. eyes open yeah. to other opportunities instead of just looking at the gold post, right? Mm. So, so mm. uncertainty mm. is beautiful. Embrace it. It's amazing. And I'm so proud of you. Uh, All right, guys. I'm gonna oh, thank you very much. I love you. Yeah. Love you, guys. So welcome. We love, love you. you. <laughs> Check out Damon at DamonOlavincia.com <laughs> and also Psychic Medium Jennifer Doran.com. They're awesome. Check them out. I love you guys. Bye-bye, everybody. Love you. See you guys. Bye. Bye.